Say the word entrepreneur and certain names spring to mind. One of the first in the South African context, no doubt, would be Raymond Ackerman, the man who over the last 40 years has defined the supermarket landscape in this country. Uh, retail really, Mr Ackerman, was in your genes. Your dad was a, a retail pioneer, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He and three friends started Ackerman's after the First World War. In fact, I nearly wasn't here because he nearly went to Delver Wood, where all the South Africans were killed, if you remember, in the 1917 period. Certainly for, he, fortuitous not only for the Ackerman family, but I suppose for the yeah. South African housewife as well. Well, the interesting thing, he was a cook in the army, and he fortunately, I say this with a smile, he, he poisoned the, 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 these guys with some bad cooking, and they put him into DB, and he couldn't go over to Delver Wood. <laughs> well, that was a, a strategic measure, and clearly strategy was part of his makeup. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Greatermans then bought Ackermans, and uh, already in the 1950s, you were beginning to see, I guess, how a large-scale retail format could work for food as, as well as clothing. And that was, is that where you started becoming interested in the concept of, of food retail yes. on a large scale? Yes, because Ackermans were bought out by Greatermans. It's a very sad thing, but that's another story. And I joined, I joined them after university and in clothing. I was in clothing stores. I mean, my whole background was clothing and haberdashery and that sort of thing. Greatermans, they had a food store in one of their uh, basements of their department stores, and they turned it into a supermarket. Very much like OK Bazaars had a supermarket in the basement in the early 1950s. And... Then they decided to open an independent freestanding food store and they moved me out from clothing and to go with a guy they brought out from Marks and Spencer to open the first Checkers supermarket. That was quite, a, it was a very significant time and I was lucky to be chosen. But in life, you know, you, you make your luck and I worked really hard with this guy from England and we opened three or four Checkers stores and then he went off ill. And I said, please let me run them, because I know what I'm doing, at least I thought I did. And uh, that's how I got involved with the building up of Checkers. Well, perhaps you, you knew too much, because not long after that, or it may have been a couple of years, you hit something of a speed wobble and had a bit of a disagreement with management. Yeah, I, I, I firstly uh, got it. I managed to get myself in charge of this, the Virgin Checkers group. We built it from nothing to 89 stores, and yes... Uh, they just called me in on a Monday morning and fired me when I just had my our fourth child. And I'd done nothing wrong except I was always fighting like crazy for a supermarket which was entirely different thinking from the department store people. So I was clashing and they probably thought or they did say it was too difficult. Was it a body blow at the time? Because in retrospect, you can look at it, I'm sure, and say, thank goodness they fired me. But especially with a fourth child having just arrived, I would imagine you were under considerable pressure. Uh, it really was terrific pressure. My father had just died. He died literally about three weeks before this clash. My wife was, sorry, my wife was ill having my fourth child. We hadn't quite had, got the fourth child. And... And really, I had no capital at all. I just had the, the income. So it was a body blow, but it turned out to be the, the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Absolutely right. Good. Then you come up with this idea. There's a chap called Harry Golden who's got this small clutch of supermarkets called Pick and Pay. And you think to yourself, I'll show you, Checkers. Well, it was, there was another link. Harry Golden, who I'd never met before, phoned me when I had 89 Checker, checker stores, said, can I come and see your stores in Johannesburg? And I said, yes, Harry, the Americans have been very good to me, so by all means. And something got into me to, to go out and meet him at the airport. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> and I took him around the stores all day, took him to lunch, and he was so appreciative that when I got fired from Checkers, the first guy he phoned was me to say, Raymond, I want to sell out and I want to sell to you. Isn't it amazing? And I suppose that is an important lesson and something that you've carried throughout your life, that those gestures that are seemingly yeah. uh, intrusive at the time, perhaps a bit of a pain in the neck, can be very rewarding. Well, that's exactly, Bruce. That's probably the most important lesson of the whole lot. Uh, that's, a lot of people are too, always too busy to see this one or too busy to see that. It's those little gestures and contacts that can lead to, to a total change in your life. Now, Harry Golden sells you pick and pay. They're four stores. Yeah. Was, was failure ever a consideration? Was it something that was part of your makeup? Did you have that fear or was it oh, simply boy, you were just I, driven? I, I, I live with that fear all the time. And uh, having gone through what I went and building checkers and my father having lost Ackermans because he lost it during the Second World War, it was, it was fear of failure and also drive. It was a combination of the two. And... Uh, 
it was an amazing time because we, we got the money by getting 50 shareholders together and borrowing the rest from the bank to buy out Harry Golden. And those shareholders, did they, I mean, who were they? How did you approach them? Did you do an Anton Rupert style driving around the countryside uh, calling on your friends and family? Yeah, I, it, it, but it was, I was you know, a much younger guy and I got a, a friend of mine in Joburg to get 25 of his friends and my friends and I got my brother-in-law in Cape Town and that's how we did it. We had to do it in two and a half days. <laughs> to get the money together and get the bank. Cause Harry Golden wanted an answer very quickly. So it was a real a, a rush time at, a, and a very exciting time. But we got it all, all done. It was quite an amazing thing. How, how much did you raise, incidentally? We raised 600, 620,000, of which um, 400 was from the bank and 220 was from shareholders. And one thinks of 620,000 Rand today is you know, a sort of, a, I don't know what your managers are paid in the stores, but a, a good managerial salary. Yeah. It was a considerable amount of money. It was enormous, and I never thought we'd get, we'd get it, we'd get it. But because uh, it was big in those days, and uh, it's turned out very shortly after that, it turned out to be a very good buy because we managed to build pick and pay straight away and uh, trying to fight on, on the principles that. I'd had a fight with him in Greatermans. They wouldn't accept my consumer sovereignty thinking and all the principles that I tried to, that I that I learned from other people. I've never been a clever guy myself, but I absorbed from other people, and I had these principles which Greatermans wouldn't allow me to put into checkers, and that's enabled me to put it into a new chain. You mentioned earlier that you, know, you mentioned a 